Okay, today we're going to talk about uh, error propagation, uh, which is a very important topic. Uh, but let me first start by, by uh, reviewing some important properties of Gaussian variables. Uh, so if we start with variables x1, x2, and xn, and these are all Gaussian random variables, uh, with means mu1, mu2, mu n, and, uh, and variances sigma1 squared uh, through sigma n squared, uh, then, then we know some things about uh, random variables that are linear combinations of these Gaussian random variables. So for example, if y is uh, c1 times x1 plus c2 times x2 plus dot 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 out to cn uh, times, c times xn, then, then this y is a sum of Gaussian random variables and y then itself becomes a Gaussian random variable. And we know that the expected value of y is the linear combination of the expected values of each of those other random variables. And we also know that the variance in y is the sum of squared coefficients in the linear combination multiplied by the variances in that linear combination, right? So we have the c1 squared and, and sigma1 squared on out to cn squared uh, sigma n squared. Okay, so this is a, a very important result that, that we've seen, seen before, uh, but let me go ahead and switch, uh, switch um, notebooks here and uh, show how we're going to use that to analyze uh, random variables and the propagation of error through functional relationships uh, that relate one random variable y to a bunch of other random variables x1 through xn. Okay, so uh, the way we're going to do this is we're going to we're going to make a, a rather bold approximation, not not always justified. Um, you know, we we do this because it's the simplest thing to do, and I and I want to say at the outset that at times uh, this will be somewhat inaccurate, and you would prefer to go through and do something like bootstrapping. Uh, but but for our purposes, we're going to uh, just proceed with uh, this approximation that if I make a linear a Taylor series uh, expansion of this y as a function of these x's around their average values, right? So I'm going to Taylor expand y, uh, which is a function of x. I'm going to expand this around the average value for x1 and the average value for x2 and the average value for variable xn. And uh, I'm going to evaluate y at the average for all of those things. Let me bring that, uh, bring that up here. Uh, so we're saying that the uh, we expect to find that the value of y is equal to the value of y at the expected value of x. Now, now that's one of those assumptions that is kind of bold. That's true if each of these variables uh, is Gaussian distributed and if this was a linear combination. Uh, but f might be highly nonlinear and these variables might not really be Gaussian distributed. And so it's not really clear whether, whether uh, this is going to be true. So we are making an approximation here. Nevertheless, that's what we're going to go ahead and do, uh, is to say that the average of y is, is f evaluated at the average of each of these individual uh, means for each of these different variables that y depends on. So, so without uh, going too far into all of my uh, worrying about the possible problems with this procedure, let's just say that y is equal to this average value of y uh, multiplied by a coefficient that is the derivative of y with respect to the first variable, and then that is multiplied by a uh, by a, diff a deviation of x1 from the mean value of x1, and then we do that for every one of these variables, right? So we have a, also a derivative out to uh, y with respect to the nth variable multiplied by the deviation of the nth variable from its mean. Uh, so you can imagine a whole long list of data, and at each data point we're going to have uh, we're going to have some fluctuations around the target maybe every time we tried to uh, tried to keep x1, x2, and xn at these specific values but every time we're off by a little bit. And so there's some some uncertainty and that uncertainty will propagate through the relation uh, of f to y and, and translate into some uncertainty in the variable y. And that's what this this subject of error propagation is really about. Okay, so so we know now, if we think that this behaves like a linear combination of Gaussian variables, let me, let me uh, point out, these are the coefficients, and these are the things that we envision as being Gaussian variables. Okay, so we can now take the actual value of y minus the average value of y. Think of this as a variable that represents fluctuations of y around its average, y minus y bar. And that's equal to a linear combination of other variables that are fluctuating around, around their average, which in this case now is zero by definition they have coefficients. And so, so now y minus y bar should become a Gaussian. 
and by the formulas that we just discussed uh, at the very beginning of this video, um, the variance in y should be a sum of the squared coefficients so for the derivative of this function f with respect to each of the individual variables multiplied by the sample variances uh, for that, that kth variable uh, delta xk. Right? And we do that for every one of these variables. All right, so, so let's do an example and see this in practice. Uh, so if we take a non-isothermal irreversible reaction A going to B. Okay, so this has a rate law that's given by the rate is equal to K0 times E to the minus uh, activation energy over RT uh, multiplied by the concentration uh, of, of species A for a first order reaction. Okay, so, so these things, K0, E, and R, these are all constants, right? And the experiments that we're doing uh, we're supposed to have a set temperature and a set concentration, but it's difficult to get these things exactly right. And so we're going to have uh, some variance around the uh, sample mean and the and sample mean temperature and the sample mean concentration. Okay, so these are the sample variances in the temperature and the sample variance in the concentration. Uh, and so now what we're going to do is we're going to take the uh, take the uh, function r as a function of uh, temperature and concentration, and we're going to expand around the set point temperature and the set point concentration, if you will. So this is now uh, what R should be if we were able to exactly control that temperature and the concentration. Uh, so this is R over bar, if you will. And then we have these deviation variables that give us contributions that depend on the derivatives with respect to those variables. So if we make a deviation from the set point in the concentration, that's going to result in a uh, change in the rate of this much, right? So this is, uh, this is the derivative with respect to concentration of that function f. Uh, and so, so this is uh, evaluated then at the average temperature and also at the average concentration, but it doesn't depend on that. Then we want to come over here and consider the effect of a, of a deviation uh, from the target temperature. Uh, and that's, that's going to give us, that gives us this coefficient uh, so we can now recognize that this first term, the one that didn't, wasn't proportional to any of the deviations, was the R over bar, and we can move that to the left side of this equation and think of that as being the deviation from R, uh, of R from the, the target value of R. And uh, now we have a standard deviation in R that we can write uh, by using the relationship between the variance of y and the variance of all those x's. That was the formula that we had. So this is now just plugging into that formula. Uh, if you want to see it again, remember this is the variance in y is a, is a sum of uh, squared coefficients times squared uh, variances of each of the individual variables. So that's what you have here. Here are the squared, squared variances. Here are uh, the squared variance and the temperature. These are the coefficients, and we want the standard deviation. Uh, so we're taking a square root of that sum at the end. Okay, so so now we can factor out the mean rate from this expression, and that leaves behind another term over here that just has the relative variances. Uh, so this is the variance in the concentration normalized by the squared concentration, and the variance in the temperature normalized by the squared temperature. And here we have a um, and here we have this coefficient e over r uh, that didn't get factored out. Okay, so, so this thing uh, now tells us about um, the relative variance, or sorry, the relative standard deviation in the rate. Uh, and this is propagating through from variances in the concentration and the temperature, right? So, so if we divide through by the mean rate, then we find that the standard deviation normalized by, standard deviation in the rate, normalized by the actual rate, is just given by this term with the um, with the relative concentrations and the relative temperatures. In the temperature case, it has this non-unity non coefficient that arose because this is a very nonlinear dependence on temperature. Okay, so, so this is the relative uncertainty in the rate that's propagating through the function that links rate to temperature and concentration. Uh, and and we, from that function, we can tell what coefficient should go in here. So it was linear in the, in the concentration, and so a 1 uh, is is out here in front of this term. It was highly nonlinear in temperature, and that's why we got this term. Uh, so I think that that is um, what I wanted to show in this. Um, we will do some more homework problems. And one of the things that you will notice in your homework problems is a pattern emerge. When you have a uh, function y uh, that is uh, a product of two different variables, and you do this error propagation result, you end up with the relative uncertainty in y 
is just the variance in uh, variable x1 divided by x1 squared uh, plus the variance in x2 divided by x2 squared, right? So that's if y is equal to x1 times x2. And those kinds of relationships that are products always end up giving you coefficients that are unity in this, inside this, uh, this uh, quantity here.